forth, Father God, even she began to leap, rule, and reign, Father God, as she began to walk the clouds of the power of the Spirit, that even in the enemy tries to come in and discourage her in any shape, form, and fashion, Father God, I loose it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I declare, Father God, even at the top of this segment, Father God, that you look over the class of 1980 in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now, even as I speak, Father, because I prophesied before, Father God, that that should be not another death in this class, Father God, even as they begin to hear the words that come from the kingdom of God, that you will bless them in their life, Father God, and everything they're going against, Father God, you will lose it in the name of Jesus. And I declare, Father God, that the heads is around them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, all the classes and all the entire class of all the high schools and elementaries, whatever they may be, do protect your children. In the name of Jesus, protect the United States as we raid out and rule, Father God. Look over the White House and all the turmoil that's going on for the division to be leadership. Father God, let them know that you're the leader. Father God, look over our armed forces, Father God. Every outside force to try to come against us, Father God, we loose and we shut it down by the power of the Spirit. Father God, we come against every sort of disease and sickness, every sort of cancer, Father God. We shut it down by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And Father God, I thank you for this opportunity in the name, oh, in the name of Jesus. And I declare that the word that I speak on tonight be a word to go forth, Father God, that no demon, no devil in hell will stop it, Father God, what you called it to be. Father God, I loose it in the name of Jesus. I break every shackle and I cause the word to be just what you wanted to be on tonight. These things I speak not of myself, but of the power, I mean the power of the most high God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, Lord, amen. It's always a pleasure for you guys to be with me here at Harvest New Life Church and Harvest New Life Studios here in the city of Dallas. I want to go ahead right into the word. We've been dealing with the area of discouragement. And one of the areas I've been talking about here, uh, dealing with some of the areas of discouragement. And we look over in the book of uh, over in the book of, of Romans. Let's turn the Bibles over to the book of Romans for a second. We want to look at some things here. Just deal with the process of discouragement and how the Romans uh we're in chapter uh uh, we get and turn our Bibles on the turn with you guys and make sure we get good solidification in the spirit on tonight. And we take our time and hear just what the word of God has to say. Let's go over to the book of Romans. And that's going to be, we, we, we're going to be operating out of t- our three different Bibles today. We're going to talk some cross reference in the area of the uh, King James Version, which you know the King James rules. We're going to go to the one thing I like is the Common English. We're going to go to Common English Bible. Also, we're going to do with the Amplified Version. For those who also are listening to my good friend over there in Fort Worth, Texas, Dr. J.C. Matthews is on tonight at the same time, always bringing the prophetic word that's coming from the kingdom. For those who you are tuning on him, and rather than tuning in here, it's always going to receive an awesome word because he's always got something awesome he's bringing forth the kingdom. Uh, he's got his new book out called The Paradigm Shift, and it's a powerful word that God is doing. How the Apostle Paul begins to speak about the most part of uh, some of the things to talk about the ABCs in the ministry. Now, God is really causing us to be able to go in maturity and understand that when we go through circumstances and situations in our life, that we got to believe the word of God when it says no weapon form. When we let things be to discourage us, make us feel bad and opposite what God called us to be, we begin to get what we call discombobulated outside the will of God. We begin to let things come into our hearts and mind that God never intended to come in. Am I somewhere this morning? I like to say this morning because I believe God has got a morning word, even though we're in the evening. God is still blessing all throughout the day. Most of you know, come in my morning shows, know that uh, I'm, I'm usually moving in the morning, but we want to speak right now this evening in the name of Jesus that we talk about the power of God. And how the enemy tries to come in and really make us feel uh, what we call upset. Uh, he, he tries to discourage us in what God has really called us to do. Let's look over here in the book of Romans. Uh, let's look over in chapter uh, 8. And let's look at verse 31. And let's hear what the word of God has to say. We read this and it says, what should we say then? Uh, what should we say then? Uh, see, to these things, if God be with us, as God be, if God be with us, as God be for us, who can be against us? Let's look at that real close. And we got to really understand how God hedges us. When Ephesians talks about putting on the whole armor of God. He talks about how he puts himself above every prince and every power and every dominion. We go to the book of Ephesians. We look at Ephesians 1 and 21. He said, far above every prince, every power in every dominion. Now, this is what he says. He's talking about breaking generational curses. He said, not only named in this world, but everything which has come. When God declared, according to the book of Jeremiah 1 and 5, when you was created, when you was born, when you was engineered through the canals of the of the woman, and God brought you forth with the gift that's in you, he already patterned you according to the kingdom of God. 
but he wants you to confess the word of God according to Romans 10, 8, 9 that said if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord and not only is Lord but he's Lord over everything the Bible says you shall be saved and when you become saved the word of God declares according to the, full, the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 he calls you a new creature and he said, if any man to be in Christ, he's a new creature. All old things have passed away. And this is what we really got to believe when the word of God talks about the transformation of the power of the resurrection of Christ that's in you. He talks about, he says in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, once again, he said, what shall we then say to these things? What are these things? The enemy that comes against us to make us feel discouraged. What are you dealing with? What are some of the things that, that happens to you in your life? What are the things that have been said about you? What are some of the people that surround you that you really need to eliminate to the point that you got to get them away from around you to stop bringing what you call discouragement words and making you feel uh, uh, dishonorable what God declared you to be? You know, the word of God talks about how you're guilty by association. And sometimes you walk with the purpose and the power of God. The Bible declares that you got to separate yourself. He said, come from among them. In other words, come from among those negative thinkers, those negative speakers. I was talking to Apostle Murray, uh, one of the women of God this afternoon, and uh, she was talking about the process of how her husband it was in the hospital. Just a testimony to you guys. Powerful woman of God, Apostle Rogers and his uh, uh, wife, Pastor Murray. And they were talking about the discouragement that the doctors come in and begin to speak it to the hearts of people who had critical situations and how it's so uh, easily for your spirit to get discouraged by a word what somebody says to you, especially when you are in a situation where it depends on your life and how she began to go against the doctors, began to talk to them, that these doctors are coming in, giving my husband discouraging words every second, every doctor that came in, he's giving them discouraging words, how the enemy just pounds at you. Am I saying something to somebody? How he just keep on giving that negative word over and over and over and again about something that's in you. But the word of God keep telling you, if I be for you, I'm more than the world against you. The word of God says, once again, we look over in Romans chapter eight in a 31st, uh, 31st verse. He said, he said, what shall we then say to these things? What are these things I'm talking about? He said, if God before us, who can be against us? He's talking about breaking the spirit of discouragement. Then notice you got a God on your side. And he talks about it in the book of uh, Numbers uh, 23, 19 to 21. He says, he says like that. He said, am I a God that I should lie? Or am I a son of any man that I should have to repent? I have been given a command to bless you. And this is what he's saying. And I cannot and I will not reverse it. The word of God declares according to Psalms 84, 11, that God will not go back. He said, he said, he said, no good thing we'd hold from those who walk upright. We go to Psalms 89 and we go 89 and 34. He says the same thing. He said, I would not revert my covenant. Meaning when God speaks a word according to Isaiah 55, 11, every word that proceeded out of his mouth is a forwarding word. It's nothing wrong with the word. It's you. So what the enemy comes in, he gets you to the flesh. And we talked about the, on our last part of deal with the era of discouragement, how the enemy from the day of time, from the days of Adam and Eve in the garden, and, and, and Eve began to rebel against the very words of the king of the garden, which is Adam. And then they began to fall into folly and then they began to hide themselves with fig leaves. And the word of God came in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where are thou? Where art thou? And Adam said, he's hiding. And he said, he is naked. And the word of God declared the decree that Adam said, that the God said, who told you that? The same thing Satan used when he told Eve when she bit the apple. Who told you you can't eat of the fruit of the garden? And so these things begin to ripple in your life just as it did with the rebellion in Adam when he did in the garden. When Adam bit the apple, everything broke loose because he went against the command of God. And right now, we look at the Jesus Christ who came back, who died on the cross for the midst of every one of our sins, not some of our sins, but all of our sins, that we may have the right to the tree of life. It's amazing when the word of God declares according to the book of uh, John 14, he talks in the 10th verse, he said, believe it not, not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. He said, if you don't believe me, believe me for the works. He said, the works that I do. Even if you have the right to disobey the flush that you see, then watch my smoke. Watch what I can do with the miracles of who's calling me to do the work. He said, the father's in me and I ain't in him. And if the father's in me, then he does the work that's in me. He said, the father does the work. And the word of God goes on and speaks about it in the book of at Romans over there in that particular 31st verse. He said, what shall we then say to these 
to these things, the things that plague you, the things that makes me and you discouraged when we go against situations in our life. I want to show you something here. I want to go back over here. I want to look at it in the amplified version. I want to look at it here a little bit. And as I hear the man of God, J.C. Matthews over there at J.C. Matthews Ministry, I always tell me get more solidification out of the Word of God. As the amplified does bring a lot of clarity to it. But let's look on the amplified version. Let's go to Romans 8. And let's look at the 31st verse over in Romans 8. What then shall we say to all these things. If God is for us, who can be successfully against us? Sound like Isaiah 55 11 to me. No weapon formed against me should prosper. Am I somewhere? He, he says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That he said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That's what Philippians gives out in, in consolation to the power of God's word. But we look back over in Romans, we look at Romans, we look at the 8 and the 30 first verse. He said, What shall we say to all these things? If God, the creator of the heavens and the universe, if God is for us, who can be successful? That sounds like any kind of weapon you throw out or create a design against God. People is not, in other words, it's not going to prosper. Touch, there's a word makes sense. It's touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. He said against us, the word of God makes a very powerful, strong statement there. Nothing is successful against God's children. Because now we're walking in the power and authority in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Am I somewhere? Look what he says over here. Let's, let's, let's move on over to the 32nd verse. He that sharp is not his own son. Look, look, he did not experience his own son, but deliver him up from all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, let's think about it. If, if he allowed his own son to die for us who are sinners, that means he thought about us way before we was even born. That means his establishment and his patent that he made with us, meaning he's all for us because he gave up to prove the fact if I gave my only begotten son for you who I don't even know, then who can really be against you? Says once again that God said in the 32nd verse of Romans chapter 8 and 32, he that spared not his own son. Look what he that spared not his own son, but delivered him. He didn't try to save his son. He did, he gave him up freely. He said he spared him not, but he delivered him up for us all. How should we not with him also freely give us all things? He gave my son, my only begotten son. How many of you are willing to let your kids go out and die for somebody else? The Bible says, wish that one would, 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 would dare die for another. Most of us, we ain't going to die for nobody else. We're not going to die and give up for nobody else. But God, free in his mercies and riches and grace, looked at us way beyond our sins. He, he, he looked before our sins, before we got into what we're into, before it talks about Ephesians uh, chapter 2, that even when we was in our trespasses and sins, I'm talking about discouragement. How the enemy comes in to try to discourage you. How God is constantly giving you a revelatory word that surpasses men's understanding. That God say it's him that does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that our little mind can imagine or even think of. This is God in his best performance toward us. He spared not his son. But he gave him up for us. Now, how much more him being God and giving up his, not sparing his own son for us, will freely give us anything we need? What are you going through? What is the enemy trying to put in your head to make you feel other than what God declared you to be? The Bible decrees and declares a word that, 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 that he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose that the son of God was manifested, that he might destroy I mean, not just some, but all the works of the devil. First John 3 and 8. Come on, somebody. That even when we thought about the process of some of the things we was going through, ain't no sense us getting discouraged about anything or getting discouraged about anything. 
Because God, rich in his mercy and grace, had made a path for us. He made a place for us. That even when we was dead, as the word of God said, our trespasses and sin. And we're going to get into some trespasses and sin things when we get over in the, the book of, uh, 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 over in the book of Joshua, excuse me, for the head say, the book of Joshua, dealing with the very battle of Ai and how Joshua began to get discouraged in the midst that even when he got too boasters or get too what you call cocky, when he defeated uh, the walls of Jericho, when he knocked down the Jericho walls and then he felt like God was still with him, that he didn't have to pray no more, that he went right on over into